YouTube world. Um, I'm back, starting slightly differently today. Um, I've got some inspiration, inspirational pictures that I took while I was on holiday. And I'm going to do a couple of paintings based on some ideas I've got. And now before I do a pearl pour, I always do a test. I always do a consistency test. And sometimes you don't always get it right first time. If I was to show you the one I've got underneath my table, you will see that this one here, very little reaction. And that is because the white was way too thick. The colour I used for dumping over the top, which you'll see in a moment, um, was too thick. So I didn't have the right reactions. Now I do a test like this for every pearl pour that I do. I never go straight in and do a pearl pour. I always test them out first. So I'll just go through my colours for these paintings. I'm going to do two. And I have got some matte metallics from Deco Art. This one's champagne. I have um, extreme sheen, vintage brass. So it'll be interesting to see how these two react with one another. Um, I have some house paint tinted with gold here and with a tiny bit of violet in there just to knock it back. That's for my background. So the idea is uh, that based on this image here, the fluid art that is going to be the pearl pour through the middle, which represents the wall behind the uh, the red flower. I don't know. I don't know how I'm going to paint that yet, but there you go. Um, we'll see how it goes. <laughs> That's not today's issue. Um, so I'm just going to get cracking. Uh, I'm going to again adjust the consistency of my background. It's just a little thick. So I always leave my paints on the thicker side. So I've always got kind of room to manoeuvre. If you make them too thin, you've got no room to manoeuvre. So it's actually just such a simple concept, this. You can see only using two colours and my um, Amsterdam white. So we'll see how we go. Just for ease of use, I am putting this in a smaller container. I don't know why I've made up so much. It's ridiculous. So we're going to get going. So they're going to be two very similar paintings. basis of painting. Now this technique, okay, this is something that I've practiced a lot and um, everybody has their own pearl pour recipe. Mine's below in the description. Now I will be teaching this at the U first UK fluid art event in September, 26th of, 26th of September, which is a Tuesday. You can book through my website, um, myself, Monique Oliver, and Chris Schneider, my good friend Chris Schneider. We will be running workshops where you can hands-on experience, have a go, ask us questions. Uh, there will be an artist panel in the um, at the end of the day with the three of us. Plus, we'll be doing. Um, Joined by Dawn, Dawn uh, Cohen from the UK Fluid Art Facebook group, who is the fount of all knowledge. 
So what will happen throughout the day, you will have the opportunity to do three workshops, pearl pour, uh, flip cup landscape pour, and um, you will be able to see and get up close and personal um, bloom, bloom demonstration um, with Monique Oliver, who does some beautiful, beautiful work. So again, you can book, it's a whole day. Lots of us are meeting together who obviously know each other's names from Facebook, but never actually met in person. So it's gonna be a really good day. There's still a few places left. So um, go ahead and book. Right, so I have my gold here. There really is no time to hang around with pearl pools. And you, you really have to um, be intentional on what you do, on how, um, tilting severely and quickly. I've just got a bit of bare canvas there. Uh, and once you've tilted it, I can't pick it up and tilt it again. That's the only downside with doing a pearl pool because you'll distort all the cells. You don't want to do that. So I'm going to fiddle with that one in a minute and we'll get on with this one. Somehow feel maybe... Oh, we'll see how we get on. I was thinking about making it bigger, but started now, so. I can get creative. I'm just bringing a little bit of movement in here and there, either with a palette knife swiping or a bit of kitchen roll swiping, whatever you swipe of choice is. So I swapped over to voiceover. I haven't done a time lapse of the painting on this. So what I've done is a series of stills because my camera was set over, my camera arm that I used to record as well, was set over a wet painting. And I really didn't want to get up there and take it down because the last time I did that, 
I drop my phone in the wet painting and it's, that's not good. So I've taken a series of stills and I'm going to talk through exactly what I do and you can see here I've got some printouts of the photographs that I took and I've got them next to my canvases the same size as my canvases that's quite important for me and I have um, painted in the shadows the next thing the next stage is to just use um, pen and ink uh, brush pen and I in all the branches so I've really concentrate on any painting on putting in the darkest darks first and you can see on the right there really concentrate again just on the dark parts of the flowers so many times a lot of people ask me well how do I draw this how do I draw how do you draw a tree I can't tell you how to draw a tree because you have to draw what you see but what I can tell you is that you concentrate on shapes well what do I mean by that I simply mean you concentrate on the patterns that are created with your darks your mid-tones and your highlights I am not painting every single petal exactly as I see it I just can't so in these two paintings I've just concentrated on my mid tones so the colors in the middle that sit between your darkest darks and your lightest lights so you're slowly building up layers of paints and the last stage is keeping the whitest white parts little bits in flowers pure white um, so at the very end when it's dry I put my highlights in and I put my whitest whites in and then if need but be I can adjust certain darks I can even make them a little bit lighter or I can adjust them so they're a little bit darker <laughs> 